Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I'm introducing the new look for my old Sujita rocket. I haven't used it in a while. Sujita is named after the constellation, though I'm probably pronouncing it differently. It is the Arrow constellation. And it, it was a methane oxygen rocket that I used for some time. And it consists of a five a cores of five ED4 engines, each burning methane and oxygen for about uh, 343 seconds of ISP in vacuum. Uh, there you have it, and 300 at sea level, producing 1,000 kilonewtons of thrust. So that's uh, 500 tons of thrust per core in this case. But it had a lot of interesting aspects to it because it was designed with reference to also the Shinkansen space plane, uh, the infamous Shinkansen space plane, uh, which uh, we have here. The Shinkansen launches as a pair, uh, so there's two space planes belly to belly, and the tanks from the Sujita rocket are shared with the, with the Shinkansen space plane. These tanks up here, it's, it's a weird configuration to some extent because the cores actually consist of two separate common bulkhead tanks. So there's a tank here, which has a common bulkhead, methane, and oxygen, and then there's a separate tank up here that has a common bulkhead, methane, and oxygen. It's a weird configuration, but it is to allow shared usage. Uh, this tank up here gets used as the upper stage tank up here. In fact, I've used the same texture exactly. That's why we have so many EDBs running around. And uh, so it's the same tank here as here. And then the core tank, the lower core tank, is used in the carrier plane for the uh, Shinkansen space plane, which uh, carries the fuel in its body. Whereas the top part or the upper stage is the main fuel tanks in the back, and they're two in tandem for the Shinkansen space plane. So it was a whole business. And the Shinkansen space plane also uses the ED4 engine. And the upper stage engine is the ED4 vacuum on the space plane one. The carrier plane uses the one without the extendable nozzle, the non-vacuum version. Uh, so yeah, it was a unified system, uh, but it was desperate, desperately in need of new textures. I haven't done too much new modeling on this. I did add some custom uh, decouplers, and so we are going to test those out. And um, I changed the fairing a little bit. And I separated off the interstage. So what we're going and so I've retextured actually the the which call it structure there is clipping into our VAB a bit <laughs> anyway. Uh, but it's got this uh, which call it platform. Yeah, I'll call it a platform. And yeah, I decided to put the new Raise Aerospace logo, but I also added some detailing. Uh, these are going to be 3D printed. The Another parameter for the Soul Rocket is that the diameter is based on us being able to put them on trucks just like the Falcon 9. So it's the same diameter as Falcon 9 actually. Um, but in principle 3D printed tanks, uh, that is a carbon fiber inner stage. Uh, we've got reinforcement here because connecting these two tanks and then of course the pipes leading down. And actually, the couplers run around the pipes. It's a weird thing. And uh, some heat tiles on the bottom. So extra detailing all around. I've uh, made the platform look a little bit better. But mainly, it was art. The numbers have not changed. And for the Cassé rocket, which I plan to do next, that one will probably have some numbers changed. But for this one, I haven't changed the numbers. So anyway, this is a Sujita Heavy. This is with an extended core. Basically, instead of having just one of the small tanks plus one of the big tanks, the extended core has two of the big tanks, very simple. And that is how we make a heavy out of it, instead of uh, fuel cross-feeding or uh, throttling down the core engines. And yeah, otherwise there is a single stick version and then a uh, four booster version. That's why we have that cross in the platform there. All right, but let's see what this can do. I am testing it with a payload of avgas and it is 37 tons right now so we're going to try and get 37 tons into orbit with a rocket that on the pad is not 10,909 tons 909 tons the 10,000 is the platform 
Uh, so 909 ton rocket, 37 tons of payload, just a uh, uh, little hair over 4% of the launch mass into orbit. Okay, let's take it outside and see how it goes. Okay, well, obviously we should time warp to daylight. Alright, so that's how it looks in daylight. And aside from the art, mainly what I'm checking for is the booster decoupling, which again, these are custom decouplers now. The inner stage working fine, because now it's a separate part, and the fairings doing their thing. And we'll see. We're just testing the look of everything to make sure it looks alright. Yep. Uh, the sort of aliasing on that is not great, but anyway, SAS on, throttle is up, ignition, and launch. Okay, looks like the platform is not going to collide into us. That happens sometimes. It's a risky sort of platform. But it is my hope to return the Sujita into service after it's been sort of neglected for a while. It's meant to be super cheap because of all the modularity. It gets a pretty good payload to orbit mainly because of, uh, at least in this configuration, mainly because of the really high thrust to weight ratio. It gets off the pad with more than 1.6. I do still have Carolox plumes on here because uh, when I originally made this, real plume didn't have a dedicated Methalox plume, now it does, so I should probably change those engines. But yeah, I hope this is the start of a uh, long process of updating my models with better textures. Though better textures often means heftier textures, you know, larger size, which takes up more RAM, so... There's a downside, but I'm leaning towards creating a series with just my own models, so... That would save some overhead there. Okay, well, we're over 4 Gs here. Let's pull it down. The decouplers actually have two different components. There's an inside part with the actual decoupler and an outside part with the separatrons. So the separatrons, of course, have the solid fuel there. And let me just make sure that the separatrons actually fire. Oh, we can't even see. Well, it looked like they fired. I mean, it functioned anyway. It worked. That's the important thing. Okay. Uh, while we're at low thrust, we might as well separate the fairings. We're at 100 kilometers already. Okay, that works. And throttle up. I was thinking of making some reusability on here, but I'm not too sure about what method I would like. The engines do throttle. Actually, the new Prometheus engine from the European Space Agency is basically equivalent to these ED4s. I think they stole my idea, basically. <laughs> it's, it's a good idea, you know, I don't blame them. Okay, separation and ignition of the upper stage. Vacuum nozzle extension, though the flame does not uh, actually move with the nozzle extension, so... I didn't really do anything with my conformal RCS ports here. They're still the same. This engine with the big nozzle... Oh, I forgot to change the mode. Switch engine mode. 373 seconds ISP. Considering whether I should consider these a different mode. I don't know if gas generator could manage that actually. So... Shall we just call them stage combustion and let it go? I don't know. Hmm. Or I could, uh, which got... Reduce their capabilities. I think it might be too much. I was only looking for 37 tons out of this, but we might have too much left over. I might downrate the ED4 engine. Also, we could make them lighter. They're rather heavy right now. I think they're 1.4 tons apiece. 
The mounting of the engine is a little bit suspect on the bottom of this. Maybe I should put some sort of bracket down here. Alright, so I think I'll probably update these conformal RCS ports to make them look a little bit better. And I'll reconsider the numbers on the ED4 engine, but so far so good as far as bringing the Sujita rocket back into service. Let's have the RCS ports do something here. So yes. The one thing is the limited diameter of it means that we can't put really wide payloads on, but uh, put, sending up fuel tanks might be possible. There is a uh, larger fairing size available for it. But yeah, then there is the Kasei rocket, which could be much more useful, but also needs uh, some new artwork, if you will. And I will look forward to bringing that in a future video. But for now, tell me what you think about uh, this new look and we will see what we do with it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.